Especially in this day and age, curiosity is a superpower. And the best part is that it's a superpower that anybody can obtain. No radioactive spiders required. Well, maybe some spiders and maybe some giant cockroaches too. Anyway, it is my absolute pleasure having you here today, so sit back, relax, and I'll explain how you too can obtain the superpower of curiosity. Welcome to the Houston Museum of Natural Science YouTube channel. My name is Johnny Hemberger, and I'll be your mental curator in this and many more fun, engaging videos to come. So I'll start by introducing myself and my many cherished cherished? So I'll start by introducing myself and my many cherished areas of personal curiosities. Partly because I love sharing and telling stories, but mostly it's in hopes that it sparks or rekindles a curiosity within you. Now let's start with some bona fide geek street cred. I host a radio show and podcast that airs locally here in Houston, Texas, and it's called Geek Therapy Radio. It airs a few times over the weekend here, and the podcast can be found in your favorite podcast player. Now, the point here isn't to plug my show, but to tell you the motto of my show and my motto in life, and that is that we are all geeks about something, all of us. So embrace your inner geek. Whether it's astronomy, math, biology, or even muscle cars, comic books, bodybuilding, computers, vintage video games, and so on. Now, while some of us yearn to be back in the good old days of the 1980s, the term geek is no longer an insult. It means that you have a passion for curiosity in many uniquely wonderful areas of life. So embrace your inner geek and embrace your curiosity. It is my passion and my mission in life to spark or rekindle that curiosity in our global community. Now, a few sentences ago, I mentioned the 1980s. So speaking of the 1980s, let's move on to the first of my personal curiosities. Here is my beloved 1983 DeLorean DMC-12. Most of you might know this as the time machine in Back to the Future, if this isn't some bona fide geek cred, I don't know what is. This is the first stop on the tour of my personal curiosities. So let's take a look at this blast from the past. While my daily driver is a fully battery powered EV, I have had Lauren the DeLorean since July of 2000. As of recording, this July will be our 21st anniversary. Man, time flies. Is that too many time puns? Nonsense, there's no such thing. So here are some of the brief specs, since I know many of you watching are curious fellow car geeks. The engine is a PRV, which stands for Peugeot Renault Volvo V6, that puts out around, you know, 130 horsepower and about 160 or so foot-pounds of torque. It does 0 to 60 in about 8 seconds. The DeLorean is notoriously criticized for being slow, but 8 seconds 0 to 60 in the early 1980s during the oil crisis was Nothing to sneeze at. Go watch old car reviews and watch the announcer applaud cars for doing 0 to 60 in a brisk 11 seconds. My, how far we've come. Now, in the interest of keeping things moving along, I won't go into intense detail, but 90% of my love for this car isn't actually for the car itself. At the end of the day, it is just a material thing after all. The biggest source of my curiosity for the DeLorean comes from the rich historical context that surrounds it. John DeLorean, General Motors, the oil crisis, Margaret Thatcher, the violent turmoil in Ireland, Colin Chapman, Lotus Motor Cars, Johnny Carson. This car is the product of its historical context, and for anybody curious about history, you could spend years studying the history surrounding the DeLorean alone. Moving on, my next curiosities are vintage computers and video games. Sometimes to the chagrin of my beautiful and understanding wife, I like to collect retro computers and games. To that point, what collection would be complete without the legendary Commodore 64? If this didn't just send nostalgic shivers down some of your spines, it's tough to imagine what will. Perhaps my Atari 520ST? Maybe an old x86 legend like my 286 Compact Desk Pro? I still fire up this beauty regularly to do some undistracted office work in Windows 3.1. Kids, ask your parents about old computers. 
Part of the reason I keep them around isn't just for curious nostalgia, but as a clear reminder of what we take for granted today. Hey Ma, can you stay off the phone for like an hour? I'm trying to download a 320 by 240 JPEG. My goodness, but I digress. We have it so good now, it's crazy. Next on this introductory tour of me and my curiosities is my beloved arcade machine. I am a Street Fighter II nut. Once upon a time, I even competed in tournaments around Houston. It has always been my dream to own an actual arcade machine so that I could have the Street Fighter arcade experience at home. Well, my curiosity got the best of me and here it is. For the keen-eyed among you, you'll notice that this is a Konami cabinet, while Street Fighter is a Capcom franchise. Good catch! This machine is actually a technological mutt. It's a Konami cabinet that contained the 1987 game called Ajax, or Ajax, however you want to pronounce it. The machine was gutted when I bought it in 2010. So I replaced the marquee with a Street Fighter II marquee, and the brains are actually a PC hidden behind the marquee. This allows me to not only play Street Fighter 2 and other vintage games, but it's linked to my Steam account to play modern games as well. For a control surface, I was able to fit an off-the-shelf pair of joysticks. But being the geek that I am, I replaced the first player side, you know, the side I play on most of the time, with authentic Sanwa buttons from Japan. I can blast Hadoukens effortlessly. The feel is perfect. Moving on, I am also hugely curious about aviation. One day I would love to get my pilot's license, but for now, Flight Simulator 2020 running in 4K on an RTX 3090 will have to do. Yeah, that was just a tiny little flex. But if some of y'all knew how hard it is to get graphics cards right now, you'd understand. It's like trying to find toilet paper in March 2020. Keeping things rolling along here, I am also a huge, huge audio geek. I actually went to recording engineering school in Hollywood back in 2003. Okay, technically North Hollywood. I won't go into depth in this video, but my love for audio combined with my love for vintage technology has left me with a burning curiosity for vintage audio formats, especially cassette tape. Many people remember cassettes as being horrible sounding, hissy garbage, but are you ready for a plot twist? You've been listening to a normal Type 1 cassette tape this entire time. Everything you've heard on this video is coming from this very cassette tape. Pretty cool, huh? Now I can go on and on about my various curiosities. I haven't even talked about my love for astronomy yet or my eight inch Dobsonian reflector telescope. Okay, I guess I just kind of did. I won't linger, but here's what I was able to capture of the Jupiter-Saturn alignment just a few months ago. And here's the best photo I've ever taken. It's the alignment of our moon and Jupiter one winter several years ago. It was amazing. So before tying this all together and telling you why curiosity is a superpower, I'll just let you know that I am a brand new father. As of recording, my son is almost four months old and get ready Star Trek fans, his name is Riker. He's my entire galaxy. So that is quite the rap sheet of geek cred and curiosities, but where have I been going with all of this? Why do I think curiosity is a superpower, and how can you obtain that superpower? Without any shred of doubt, museums are one of the single best places in the world to explore and ignite a raging fire of curiosity in our hearts and minds. Look, I know, even as the new YouTube channel manager at the Houston Museum of Natural Science, that as wonderful as it is to live vicariously through a computer screen, especially these days, there is nothing in the world that compares to having curiosity inspired through living, breathing artifacts one can experience in real life by visiting a museum. Now, I pride myself with being open and honest with my audience. To me, you are not a passive observer. You are an active member of this growing community. In that open spirit, while I absolutely invite you to come foster your curiosity at the Houston Museum of Natural Science, I encourage those of you who don't live in Houston to find, go, and support your local museums. The fact of the matter is that museums play a critical role in igniting the superhuman ability of insatiable curiosity. Simply put, 
in my own life, I would not have that soup. I'm getting goosebumps. I would not have that superpower today if not in large part due to growing up with the Houston Museum of Natural Science. The fact that I've been given the keys to this kingdom to tell stories and inspire curiosity quite literally brought tears to my eyes. It is that open and honest passion for curiosity that I've made it a mission in my life to share with you through this world-class institution. Curiosity is a superpower. It is the superhuman ability, at minimum, to never be bored again. The superhuman ability to grow comfortable being alone with your own mind as a welcoming playground rather than a terrifying battleground of self-doubt. Being curious naturally leads to self-confidence in your own worthiness to receive love, to give love to others, and love yourself. We are two decades into the 21st century. We have all of scientific exploration and human history available instantaneously in our pocket. For many of us, it's become habit to replace boredom with consumption. My simple goal through this channel, with all of the resources of the Houston Museum of Natural Science, is to inspire or reignite curiosities in your mind to help keep it engaged. So that boredom or waiting in line becomes a joyous opportunity to daydream about astronomy, to ponder the extinction of the dinosaurs, to mentally plan your next painting, your next woodworking project, your next song, or just how to fix the radiator in your car this Saturday. Curiosity is the superpower of being content alone with your own mind. When you are content exploring the universe in your mind, you will never be bored again. And who knows, you might make the next big scientific breakthrough while you're waiting on your next oil change. So the next time you're bored, consider taking it as an opportunity to engage your mind and strengthen your superpower of curiosity. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I do not take having your attention for granted, believe me. There is so much fighting for it out there today. But if you liked the video, we sure would appreciate a thumbs up, a comment, and hitting that subscribe button. As the channel grows, so does the opportunity to inspire curiosity. So be sure to share this video and this channel with your friends and family as we spread the superpower of curiosity together. We would love having you at the Houston Museum of Natural Science, so be sure to stop by next time you're in town. You can also visit our website, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more information and engaging content. Also be sure to check out all the awesome links in the video description below, and with that, Take care, and we'll see you soon. Go forth and be curious.